Lover, boy, LHB, LHB. So I know you be dissing hoes. I'm a Pisces, yeah, she an Aries, I cheated on her. Foggy Windows, that's the first song I heard, mm-hmm. that's that's your song, Yeah, right? Single, yeah. That's your single, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I heard that, Joan, I'm like, ooh, niggas is snapping on this shit, okay, I like <laughs> I like the sound, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I said, the shit gave me a feeling. It don't sound like Broward. Nah, like it exactly. don't sound like <laughs> Broward. I was like, oh. But, you know, that that intrigued me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then maybe a couple weeks later, boom, I see this 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 mixtape for Love Her Boy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, What is it? Shit, uh, love, love divided, divided by, by lust, lust equals, equals lost. lost. Ah, like that shit. It's like so a I'm math e- equation, you feel me? Hey, Nigga, hey, hey, G shit, G shit. Niggas and females both make this love shit a math equation make it way harder than it had to be and so that's what it, what it really was for us you feel me and the breakdown of that really is when you have love for somebody and you dividing your attention and your love by lust you feel me like groupies or whatever it may be that's distracting your attention with, you feel me you get lost y'all both get lost in the sauce that's, that's how that be that, i like that breakdown so so you saying that i was gonna ask you you know what i mean what does that mean so the whole shit got a meaning to it oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why we told the story like it's, it gotta have a meaning you feel me like we wanted niggas to know like it the, the story itself i don't want to like give the story away so like i hope people actually go listen to it but like the story itself is like basically like on this rise to fame you feel me a nigga is like gonna sometimes niggas put Things that they they care about and they love on the back burner be for groupies. You feel me? For hoes. There's a lot of things coming at you. Shout out to Elvis. <laughs> There's a lot of things coming at you. You feel me? And so you distract it and mm. you get lost in the sauce. That's some real shit though. That shit should be love divided by law. Love lust. Love divided by lust equals fucking complicated. Cause that's, <laughs> yeah. You know complicated what I mean? Situation. I was looking at that shit like what the fuck? But that <laughs> shit means something. Like I said, Foggy Windows had put me on to this shit. Then I listen to the mixtape and mm-hmm. I'm like, these niggas lit. <laughs> not not only is it just the music, but y'all got intros, interludes, skits. It's like a whole creative. It's a project. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, what made y'all go that far? Like, what made y'all just say, let me put out a mixtape and put like five songs on a joint and just put it out? Like y'all put y'all y'all put in work. Y'all thought about this shit. So what made y'all even just put something together like that in the first place? Um, how it happened, I would say, is we was trying to follow up last year. You feel me? We feel like last year's tape was and probably still is slept on to this day. But right what, how we could make it better is what, what we felt was the people wasn't getting into the story last year, and so how we came about is like, damn, niggas don't do skits no more. Maybe if we put skits, you feel me, and explain what's going on before the song, then they'll understand the song better. You feel me? So. I was like, it's a dead art, so let's let's use that. And then how the interlude thing came on, came about is like we wanted to change like the vibe of the of the tape of the shit. tape midway, and that's what interludes is basically for. You feel me? So so we was like, and I feel like that's another R and B art that's like dead. You feel me? Niggas don't even know about interludes. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's throw an interlude in there, bro. It's like it was a song that we was gonna throw in the trash. You feel me? Like we was gonna like you feel me? It's, fuck it, it's dead. But I was like, man. I was in my sleep, you feel me, dreaming about the songs. Like, oh, we got to use that, bitch. Yeah, like, use it as a transition away, for the tape. And so that's just how that got in there. But it's like, what it was really about is just keeping authentic old school music. Keep, we want to sound like us and sound like new school and keep be, be us, you feel me? But, like, we still want to be influenced by what they was doing back then, interludes and skits and all that, telling the story. Nah, that shit hard though, bro. Like I said, I ain't had nothing like that in a long time. You know what I mean? Word. So when I heard that shit, I was like, bro, like these niggas on some other shit. You know what I mean? So it, it kept me engaged. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the song that I like, like my favorite song on that joint. I'm What's your favorite? Aunt Tell me. Gemini. Oh. Gemini. <laughs> I bro, feel like that's word bond. Hey, say word. Take, say word. <laughs> like word bond. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I, I'm, I don't even get into all the signs and shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But when I heard the song, I said, these niggas on something. <laughs> so so who's the person Who's the person here who can't fuck with the Gemini, though? Oh, God. 
You see, there's, there's a whole story behind this shit, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> hey. we, we, real quick, real quick. We talking about songs off their mixtape. This mixtape, bro, is lit. Like, before Love each song, yeah, before each song, they have, like, a little skit. And they like explain what the song is about a little bit, you know what I mean? So, so Gemini is like a phone call with a girl on it, it basically in her feelings, right? Work. She in her feelings about her man. I guess he's an artist or whatever, mm-hmm. and she feel like he he got mad groupies. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Uh huh. He's putting he putting his family and shit on the back. On the back, exact. So I'm listening to shit like. <laughs> Yo, this shit is some true shit. <laughs> like, how many y'all, how many rappers right now can relate? Your girl, you in the studio trying to spit bars and write and shit, and your girl think you in some pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah you feel me? You, you know what I mean? Like, else. your phone ringing, she texting, nah, nah, nah. you like, I'm in the studio. I don't even think girls understand. I'm going to say this for the nigga. I don't even think girls understand. Like, when we not even worry about that, and they, like, constantly bothering you about that, they, then you go venture off and go actually do it. They say you uh, maybe I'm wrong for saying it, but that's what it is. Sometimes like I'm not worried about cheating. I'm not worried about these hoes. But you, since you think I'm already doing it, man, I'm out here. Fuck it. Thank you for listening to Famous Before the Fame podcast. I really appreciate it. Check this out. I'ma keep doing my job, which is continue to deliver dope content. What I need from you in return don't even cost one dollar. If you really like this episode and want to hear more, make sure you follow us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and watch us on YouTube so you never miss another episode. Like, subscribe, review, retweet, and share. Again, I am Super Sean, and this is FamousBeforeTheFame.com.